Butterfly, formerly known as Satanic, recently reached rank number 1 in the world and 13k MMR, which is an enormous feat for a 15 year old. Out of the heroes he played, he spammed Luna the most and has an 80% win rate on her. Luna did not get nerfed in 7.35c. In fact, Manta is slightly cheaper now, which is an indirect buff for Luna since all the other good carries got nerfed. Not only is she the best performing carry right now, but is also the best performing overall hero on Dota 2 Pro Tracker. Now is the best time to learn her, and why not learn it from none other than the highest MMR player in the world who is having great success with her. This video will help you with exactly that and you'll get tons of MMR. Luna is considered as a strong carry because she's a decent laner, farms amazingly fast and has night vision advantage. This has been the case for a very long time, so how come Luna has been a top tier meta pick for months? Luna had two weaknesses previously. The first one was her inability to chase down foes and the other one was the fact that if the enemy got on top of her, she would just die. Her previous shard solved her first issue, which allowed her Rusen Beam to fire two moon glaives, but there wasn't any solution for the second issue. Her previous shard got changed and is now given to her as her level 20 talent, and her current shard makes it so hard to get on top of her. Kanda combined with her level 20 talent allows her to deal a lot of damage without even actually right clicking the enemy. Other than this, her aura provides attack damage to her allies and the night vision advantage makes it really hard for the enemy to gank her, not to mention her super fast wave clearing capability. She is a high tempo carry and has very strong timings. For his starting items, Butterfly has the same build in every game, with slight adjustments if there's an NP in the enemy team. He goes for triple branch, magic stick, circlet and a set of tangos. If he's against NP, he goes for quelling blade, double branch, fairy fire and a magic stick. Magic Stick allows him to sustain himself in the lane, while the rest of the stat items are mainly to make it easier for him to last it. He upgrades his Magic Stick into Magic Wand as soon as possible. As for the Circlet, he does not upgrade it into anything and just leaves it as it is. Butterfly does not prefer fighting for bounty runes. He sticks around the bounty rune on his side and if the enemy does not contest it, he gets it. If the enemy tries to contest it, he calculates whether it is possible for him to get the rune without using too many resources and then makes a decision. He prioritizes saving his mana and HP for the lane rather than trading it at the bounty rune. In most cases, he lets the enemy take it. Butterfly's laning phase is standard. He prioritizes securing as many creeps and denies as possible. Luna cannot burst down heroes in the lane. She has to chip them down slowly which can be done by using Lucent Beam efficiently. Butterfly takes Lucent Beam at level 1 in every game because it has more benefits than Lunar Blessing. The biggest thing to know about laning as Luna is knowing how to use Lucent Beam efficiently. Butterfly has two ways to use Lucent Beam. The first one is common spell usage which is using Lucent Beam to secure the range creep. Luna has a very small attack range and right clicking to secure the range creep almost always puts her in a bad position which is not ideal, which is why Lucent Beam is a better alternative. The other way Butterfly uses Lucent Beam is when he knows he can also land a right click or two on the enemy. He uses it on the enemy and follows up by multiple right clicks by either his own hero, his teammate's hero or his creeps. This allows him to chip down the enemy slowly and eventually leads to a kill. Another thing Butterfly does to make sure he secures as many last hits as possible is that he stands as close to the creeps as possible without compromising his positioning. Luna has a very slow projectile and ranged heroes in general get denied very easily. He compensates for it by standing in melee range of the creeps to secure them. This allows him to have a lot of last hits in the lane which means he gets to his treads faster. Butterfly always upgrades his magic stick into a wand as soon as possible before buying anything else. After that, he rushes his treads. Now the thing that is crucial to understand here is how he builds up towards the treads. He always goes for Band of Elvinskin as his first component. It provides him with 6 agility, which is 6 damage, 1 armor, and 6 attack speed. It helps him in securing last hits. After that, he always goes for boosts of speed over gloves of haste. Positioning on Luna is crucial, and boots help with that. After that, he gets the gloves. The pattern is the same in every game. For his skill build in the lane, he always takes Lucent Beam at level 1, followed by 2 points in Lunar Blessing at level 2 and 3, followed by Moon Glaives at level 4. After that, he maxes his Lunar Blessing and Moon Glaives. He does not scale his ultimate or upgrade his Lucent Beam after level 1. His build at level 9 is generally 1440 in every game. He maxes his Lunar Blessing first. Luna is one of the fastest farmers in the game thanks to her Moon Glaives and Lunar Blessing. And if these two are not maxed first, 
Her farm will get affected, which will ruin her item timings, and Luna falls off easily if that happens. So it is crucial to follow the same build in every game. Speaking of farming, let's discuss the most important thing about Luna. Farming patterns. As soon as Butterfly hits level 5, where he has 3 points in his Lunar Blessing and 1 in Moon Glyphs, he stops holding the lane and starts pushing it out. He turns on his farming mode, he pushes the lane in and then farms the side camps. He has 3 types of lane farming patterns. One includes lane creeps and the other does not. It depends on whether he feels safe to stay in the lane. If he feels safe to stay in the lane and is having a good time, then he pushes the lane in and farms the side camps every minute. His farming pattern is pretty simple. Every minute, there are going to be two waves and four side camps. He pushes in the wave and then proceeds to farm the side camps. Then he farms a second wave and then proceeds to farm the remaining side camps. The idea is to farm as much as possible in a minute before the map refreshes. Thanks to these farming patterns, he almost always has 90 plus lassets at minute 10. If he does not feel safe to farm the lane, he completely ditches it. He goes to his jungle and just farms the camps there. He either lets the enemy take his tier 1 tower or he lets his position 5D push it. The key thing to understand here is that no matter how much gold you can get by farming lane creeps or defending your tower, survival is always more important. If his tower dies due to him losing his lane, his farming pattern changes. He stays near his tier 2 and farms the side camps near it. Since his tier 1 died, the enemy waves will automatically push into his tier 2. He waits for them and D pushes them. This way, he still gets to farm a decent amount of gold and simultaneously relieve pressure off the map for his team. After getting his treads, Butterfly always opts for the Mask of Madness. Mask of Madness is quite literally steroids for Luna. It makes her farm really fast and also helps her to sustain herself. Glaives are directly proportional to the amount of attacks Luna does. So the more the right clicks, the more glaives. The attack speed from Mask of Madness means more glaives. In terms of his build up towards Mask of Madness, he always gets Morbid Mask first. It allows him to sustain himself in the jungle from the lifesteal, whereas getting the damage from the broadsword first really doesn't do anything as Luna does not have damage issues thanks to Luna Blessing. Butterfly also buys a casual win list after getting Mask of Madness. The faster Luna moves from camp to camp, the faster she forms, and the movement speed from win list helps with that. Every video takes a lot of effort, and I want to keep helping you guys by making quality content. If you are enjoying the video, please make sure to like and comment, as it helps with the YouTube algorithm, and do subscribe as well. After a certain point, Butterfly changes his farming pattern and moves to his triangle. There are certain conditions when it comes to understanding when to start farming in the triangle. The first condition is whether he is capable of farming ancients. When it comes to farming camps or waves, it comes down to two things, safety and how fast they can be cleared. With Mask of Madness and Maxed Out Glaives, Luna does not have trouble farming ancients, but there are more conditions. The second condition is whether the enemy safely in tier 1 tower is dead or not. This is quite crucial because it opens up the opportunity to farm the enemy small and large camps safely while also farming a wave. If any of these conditions are not met, Butterfly does not go to his triangle and keeps farming in his own jungle and lane. There is one scenario where even if the enemy safely in tier 1 tower is not dead, you can still farm the triangle. This is when your own jungle and lane are unsafe and triangle is the only place where you get anything. His triangle farming pattern is quite simple. He starts his minute at the triangle, farms a large camp, followed by the ancient camp. After that, he does not go to his other ancient camp as that is mostly a bait because it does not lead to anything after as there is nothing close to it. Instead, he goes to the enemy jungle and farms a large plus small camp and pushes the wave in. After that, if he has time, he goes back to his other ancient and either stacks it or farms it. This allows him to farm close to a thousand gold in a minute. After Mask of Madness, Butterfly always opts for the Manta style, and Manta is amazingly good on Luna as the stats from the Manta help her farm faster, not to mention the additional movement speed. Other than that, Manta Illusions also have the Aura plus Glaives. Using these illusions, Luna farms at a much higher rate. After Manta, Butterfly chooses between Hurricane Pike, BKB, or Butterfly depending upon the game. If he is against heroes that do physical damage, and there aren't that many stuns or spell damage, he goes for Butterfly. Butterfly gives her more agility, which is naturally more damage and if the evasion allows her to stand her ground and fight the enemy. Some examples are heroes like Templar Assassin, Phantom Lancer, Faceless Void, and Meepo. If he's against heroes who have a lot of stuns and spell damage, he goes for BKB. 
There are certain heroes that do stun and spell damage but do not care about BKB, like Magnus, Enigma. Against these heroes, it isn't that good to buy BKB, but if the follow-up damage is magical, then buying BKB against these heroes is good. Some examples of heroes where BKB is good are Pango, Mars, and Puck. If he's against heroes who can easily get on top of him and he needs to maintain his position, he goes for Hurricane Pike. In majority of his games, he opted for the Pike. Some examples are heroes like Slark, Tusker, Primal Beast, Razor, and Invoker. One Pike can ruin all of their initiations, and that's usually all Luna needs. After deciding on his big item after Manta, he always opts for the Shard. Luna's Shard is crucial to have. Without her Shard, Luna is not the same hero. Shard provides Luna with a 25% damage reduction, which includes all types of damage. Other than that, anyone that collides with her glaives takes 75% of the damage off the glaives. The shard allows her to be aggressive and with this timing, it's amazingly hard to take down a Luna. With that being said, in some of your games, you might buy all of these items, just in a different pattern. For example, if you're against Pango plus Lark, getting BKB plus Pike and Butterfly are all crucial. It's all about resolving issues and covering your weaknesses. It is very crucial to buy the correct item on Luna as buying the wrong item could drastically ruin her item timing and she falls off really easily. If you want to keep it simple, buy BKB plus Shard every game after Manta. Manta basically means an additional 200 gold per minute on Luna. Butterfly uses his illusions to farm places that his main hero cannot. This means areas that are dangerous. He uses his illusions mainly to farm waves deeper into the enemy territory. The key thing to understand here is to use your illusions to farm places your main hero cannot reach. Don't use them to farm places you can easily reach. In terms of joining early fights, Butterfly does not prefer joining fights until he has at least 2 points in his Lucent Beam and 1 point in his ultimate along with having Manta. Luna does not offer anything in fights without her ultimate, so the timer where he can join fights is level 12. Once he gets that, he's open to joining fights as long as his ultimate is off cooldown. He usually has his Manta around minute 15 along with his level 12. At that point, his hero is amazingly strong and joining fights is the right choice. If you're starting out as Luna, I would advise you to not join fights until you have your shard plus BKB. After Butterfly has Manta, another big item, and shard, he looks to use his timing efficiently. This is usually around the 20th minute mark. He starts playing the area around Roshan, and once he has control of that area, he takes Roshan and secures the Aegis. These items combined with Aegis basically seals the deal. After this point, it's very hard to lose the game. For his overall skill build, Butterfly always maxes his Lunar Blessing first, followed by Moonglaives and then his Lucent Beam. He does not take ultimate till level 12. He only takes one point in ultimate at level 12 and then maxes his Lucent Beam. The damage of the ultimate is directly proportional to the damage of the Lucent Beam. So having zero points in Lucent Beam essentially means that your ultimate will not work, which is why he takes one point in ultimate and then he maxes his Lucent Beam. In the early stages of the game, Luna is focused on farming, so having points in the ultimate or Lucent Beam does not make any sense, whereas maxing Moonglaives and Lunar Blessing makes a lot of sense. As for his talents, at level 10, he always takes the minus 8% Moonglaives damage reduction over the stun duration increase on Lucent Beam. As discussed before, Moonglaives help Luna to farm faster. With the level 10 talent, the Glaives do more damage, which means faster farming and more damage in fights. It also scales with the Shard. At level 15, he always takes the minus 2 Lucent Beam cooldown over Eclipse cooldown. Lucent Beam cooldown will scale with the level 20 talent later on, and as discussed at the start of this video, Kanda and Lucent Beam talent at level 20 helps Luna do a lot of damage from a long range, and with a lower cooldown on Lucent Beam, she can use it a lot of times in fights. At level 20, Butterfly takes the two Moonglaives fired on Lucent Beam. This is pretty self explanatory as discussed before. This is essentially Luna's previous shard and it helps Luna scale in the later stages of the game. Butterfly's games never reached the point where he hit level 25, but looking at what other pros are preferring at level 25, they take the Lunar Blessing damage talent, as it provides Luna and her teammates with a lot of damage. The mini stun on Eclipse is only good if you buy Axe, which you don't on right-click Luna. After getting his big items after Manta, Butterfly always opts for Kanda and Satanic for his late game itemization. Kanda is Luna's damage item. Kanda combined with level 20 talent does insane damage per Lucent Beam cast. It works really well with her kit. After Kanda, Butterfly disassembles his Mask of Madness into Satanic. Satanic gives him another way to protect himself. 
Thike, BKB, Shard, and then you have Satanic as well. Multiple ways to be aggressive is always nice. When it comes to team fighting, Butterfly starts with his ultimate to zone out the enemy and then uses his BKB to run through to the enemy. The idea is to get on top of the enemy with BKB plus ultimate plus shard and then right click them down. This is when he has an early game timing. In later stages of the game, with Kanda you would want to press your Q as often as possible in the fights. If you wish to significantly improve your gameplay on any role, I offer private coaching lessons and training plans that can help you reach higher ranks as they have for other students. If you're interested, limited slots have been opened for March, which can be found on my Discord linked in the description. Please make sure to subscribe and like the video for more high quality content like this. Other than that, I stream on Twitch, which can also be found in the description. Do let me know in the comments if you have any feedback. Otherwise, have a nice day and good luck with your games.